The inferior alveolar nerve is one of the most important nerves in dentistry, if not the most important nerve that we deal with regularly in our practices. It's very important that as we move forward in these videos and begin to learn how to extract these mandibular teeth, we have a solid understanding of this nerve and its innervation. So the inferior alveolar nerve is a branch of the third division of the trigeminal nerve. It is also referred to as the V3 branch or the mandibular nerve. The nerve itself enters the mandibular foramen, which is located on the medial aspect of the ramus. The lingula is this little bony projection that we'll see covering the mandibular foramen, and this is typically our target site for our injection for the mandibular block. We're aiming just superior and slightly posterior to this foramen and above this lingula to try to get anesthetic to enter the foramen and block the nerve. So as the nerve courses forwards, it will move inferiorly and anteriorly, coursing past the third molar roots. Now typically the third molar roots are in close proximity to this nerve, and the nerve will sometimes be buccal to this, sometimes be lingual to the third molar roots, but there is maybe a slight predilection for the nerve to still be on the buccal aspect of these third molar roots. So it's extremely important when we get looking at removing third molars, especially impacted third molars, we'll cover this in future videos. As we continue forwards, the nerve often begins to drop fairly sharply, kind of beyond the apices of the molar teeth. So when you get to the second molar and first molar, typically the nerve is lying beneath the apices. However, it is very important to know where this nerve is when we're extracting these teeth because sometimes extractions don't go as smoothly as we planned. We may end up breaking a root tip or needing to retrieve a root tip. And if we do that, there's a chance that we can end up injuring this nerve if we're digging too deeply or in the wrong location. If we're applying the wrong forces to a root tip, sometimes you can even push a root tip into the mandibular canal or this inferior alveolar nerve canal through the corticated edges of that canal. And that can cause some problems that the patient will need to deal with. Now, when we look on a pan, you'll be able to identify the inferior alveolar nerve canal, and that is demarcated by two white parallel lines, and we'll see those running through the mandible. They terminate at this little radiolucency that we'll see on the pan, which is the mental foramen. The inferior alveolar nerve continues forwards as the incisive nerve to give innervation to your premolars all the way up to your central incisors. It also innervates the molar teeth. The inferior alveolar nerve innervates the molars. Extending from the mental foramen is a terminal branch of the V3, which is the mental nerve. And the mental nerve gives feeling to the lip and the chin and the buccal gingiva. When we do an inferior alveolar nerve block, we are again numbing all the teeth on this ipsilateral side from the third molar to the central incisor. We are also getting some lingual anesthesia, but that's from the lingual nerve during our block, not the inferior alveolar nerve. And we also get no anesthesia on the buccal aspect of these posterior teeth. So that's why we have to do our separate buccal nerve block.